Don't also go to the other extreme of being so concerned that you're underweight. That is a huge problem. Being underweight is just as bad and puts almost the same amount of stress on your heart as being overweight. Okay, so really the key there is um, the balance. Okay, now I wanted to pop over um, to this one right here. This is nexusfamilyhealing.org. They just had one line um, on here that I really liked, which was it says, when thinking about mental uh, health, personal hygiene isn't one of the first things that comes to mind. For most people, hygiene means everyday tasks like brushing teeth, washing hair, and changing clothes. These tasks often are second nature. But for those struggling with certain mental or emotional disorders, these tasks are some of the most difficult things to do. A woman discussed her own personal experiences with depression and hygiene um, in this particular blog post. And she kind of just goes into her, um, her her experience. But basically what that means is, is we're neglecting ourselves. That is a sign of mental illness. We are so overwhelmed with caring for ourselves, brushing our teeth, washing our hair, changing our clothes, staying in dirty clothes, um, you know, being sweaty and all that and just never showering, going days, you know, even weeks, you know, without even brushing the teeth. That is a big problem, okay? And, you know, you just think, oh, this person just doesn't like taking showers or maybe they just never learned that. Well, that could be true, but it could be that this is a big sign that something is going on, okay? Now, on the point about um, hygiene, hygiene, when it gets to the point of being really um, elevated, uh, to where it's it's something that really is like never happening. A lot of times people who who are it's manifesting in that way are suffering with schizophrenia. And right here, this is just an article on healthgrades.com. It's a dot com. So you know it is it's it's a media piece, okay, but it does make some good points. Okay. So it says um if your loved one has schizophrenia, you know the illness can have a traumatic impact on the thoughts and emotions. Um, and it changes the way people care for themselves. So that's often too, like if you've ever seen someone um, out on the street, maybe they're homeless um, and they're very unkempt. Usually that is also a sign that that person is suffering with schizophrenia because, you know, there have been many people who have been homeless, but they figure out ways to take care of their hygiene. You wouldn't even know that they're homeless, right? You know, maybe they go into like a public restroom and they take care of themselves. They brush their teeth, they wash their hair, all of that that they have to do. And you never even know that they're homeless. That is the difference. But when you see someone else that's on the street and just kind of covered in dirt, that's when you know something's really, really off, okay? So, um really uh it, it it there's a a lot to be said here about this one um it's it basically it also just kind of talks about um the oral health here even seeing the dentist regularly is a sign of good um hygiene um but the takeaways from this article is poor hygiene stemming from apathy um can be one of the first signs of a person is suffering from mental illness once a person's treatment is underway, he or she can relearn good hygiene. Um, and they talk about some ways to do that. Okay. Um, and then some certain things um, that we can um, just be on the lookout for there. So I thought that this was a good article because it it kind of just talks about, you know, how this could be manifesting itself into mental illness that is headed towards, you know, something that we need, may need medication for and things like that. So now let's hop over to verywellmind.com. Again, this is another .com. So this is a media piece, but the article does make some good points. Okay. So it says people who live with depression or bipolar disorder may share similar behavioral patterns and avoid doing certain tasks that they should be doing, including the things that are good for them. There are some days when you might not have the energy to shower and other days when the dishes keep piling up and some um, weeks may go by and you might not have even left the house. Okay. Now there is um, kind of a, a, um, 
a, an upside and a, a downside to this with the hygiene as well that I want to touch on is some people, if you're suffering from mental illness, you are like, I'm so overwhelmed. I'm so tired. I don't even want to get in the shower. And that turns into days. Now, the other side of the coin is becoming obsessive compulsive about hygiene. So you are taking multiple showers a day, you know, unneeded. Like, let's say you haven't gone anywhere and sweated and you took like four showers that day. Um, You're scrubbing certain parts of your body. Um, A lot of women who have suffered like sexual trauma will like clean themselves over and over and over again. So um, there, that one can swing both ways, you know? So again, it's swinging both ways, but we want to land where? In the middle. We want to have that balance, okay? So um, it says normal everyday habits can seem impossible at times for those experiencing depression, but fortunately there are a few ways you can turn back bad habits and get those good ones back and get back on track. So, um, you know, basically it talks about maintaining your hygiene um, and maintaining optimum health too um, is something good to do. So it kind of gives a, a little bit of a guide here on a bipolar disorder and the things that you want to um, make sure that you are doing or um, make sure that you are actually doing, okay, is brushing your teeth doing your hair, getting dressed and changing out of your pajamas. Sometimes that's a hard one for me. I'm not going to lie, but I'm going to read this information and be like, you know what? If experts are saying like, I shouldn't do that, then I shouldn't do that. I'm not going to keep like fighting to prove my weight. And that's again, where you have to say, where am I mentally? If you are hearing something from experts, you know, this isn't me. I'm reading here from reputable sources. If you're reading that and you're listening to that and it fits you, then we got to do something about it. Can't say, oh, well, that's nice, but I don't care. I'm doing me. Well, you're never going to change like that. We're never going to make progress like that. And it's going to impact our lives and those that love us. And it's going to have a negative impact on our relationships. That attitude of that doesn't apply to me. Nope, not doing it. Okay. Okay. So um, it just goes on to mention a couple things, you know, for guys shaving, washing clothes, um, you know, so, you know, just making sure that we do these things, getting out of bed regularly. Um, Sometimes we may be sick and we need to stay in bed or just feeling a little down. Give yourself that opportunity to say, you know what, I'm not having a good mental day today. I'm going to allow myself today to have a mental down day. And I might even allow myself tomorrow to have a mental down day. But that third day, I am going to say, you know what? That is enough. And that is a rule that I've adopted for myself. I have a three-day rule. I give myself three days to be jacked up and all that. And then after that, I'm like, you know what? It's enough of that. That's enough of that time to turn that off, gear it up and, and improve now. So let me get up. Let me go ahead and make dinner. Although I'm annoyed that I have to do it. (laughs) Let me change out of my pajamas. Let me do whatever it is that I have been neglecting. Okay. Um, Household chores. Uh, You know, getting back into the swing of that. Okay. Now let's hop over here to the next one, which is, um, this one is a WebMD. WebMD is a .com, but I feel like it's a great dictionary just to kind of give you, you know, some good basic information on some things. Um, now what this one touches on, which I really, um, wanted to draw in on is what I was talking about earlier with people who obsess about going to the doctor and go constantly to the doctor with no, um, you know, legit concrete diagnosed reason to, okay? This is called somatic symptom disorder, okay? Somatic symptom disorder. Some people have excessive and unrealistic worries about their health. They are very worried about getting the disease or certain that they have a disease even after medical tests show they do not. We talked about, though, earlier how that can be a tricky one. Now, and these people often misinterrupt, misinterpret minor health problems or normal body functions as a symptom of serious disease. 
Okay, so an example of this would be, you know, a person is sure that their headaches are called by caused by a brain tumor, even after they get a scan, or maybe another scan, and it shows that they do not have a brain tumor. Okay, so then that's how we can know like, um, something might be up. Okay. Um, what are some of the features of somatic symptom disorder? People with somatic symptom disorder, uh, which um, used to be called hypochondriacs, they changed the name. So they don't, you know, we don't use that term anymore. I'm not sure why that is. Maybe that's one you may want to look up um, your, yourself. I probably will be looking it up at some point. Why do we change the name? Um, but the name is different now. We don't call people hypochondriacs anymore. Um, but anyway, they are worried about having a physical illness and um, they uh, describe symptoms that can range from general complaints such as pain or tiredness about normal body functions such as breathing or stomach noises. And, um, you know, it really um, isn't something that they are faking. They really do feel that they have, they're really convinced of it. So that that's, again, why it can be so hard to kind of say what's what. And that's why sometimes, too, it's hard for doctors because, you know, we're saying all this stuff to them and then they're doing all the tests and tests and tests and tests and they're not seeing it. And then that's where the heads can kind of butt. So um, and that's where sometimes they can get frustrated and they can't actually come out and say, hey, you know, you're suffering from mental illness. There ain't nothing wrong with you. They, by law, like they can't do that. And so I want to say this point here. I've seen individuals with this disorder, this somatic symptom disorder, constantly going to the doctor. And because by law, doctors can't say, hey, this is all mental and you need to, you know, address. Now they can say, hey, you may want to see a mental health counselor or whatever, but they can't stop you from coming. They can't say you do not need any more tests. They can't really say that to you. So then they keep doing these tests and tests and tests and tests and blood tests are fine. There's no risk with blood tests, but you don't want to be CAT scanning yourself all the time if you don't need it. That is an accumulated um, uh, risk. It, it does over some time for some people can lead to development of serious illness. If you're getting these diagnostic tests, you know, iodine contrast, multiple CT scans constantly, you're only supposed to have like 20 or 25 CTs in your whole life. I know people who've had like 50, 60, you know, um, not because they needed them. So do you, you know what I'm saying? It just gets really, really um, tricky. So that's why sometimes the, the patient and doctor, it, there's a, a bit of a disconnect. But um, so again, these are the warning symptoms that we want to look out for ourselves to make sure we are not um, having this somatic symptom disorder. Okay. So again, the person has a history of going to many doctors um, and they are looking for a doctor that will agree 100% with every single thing that they say. Um, and again, we've talked about how that can go. So got to just exercise balance there. The person recently experienced a lost or stressful event. Now, let me talk about this one for a second. It doesn't have to be recent. You could have lost something years and years ago or felt wrong in some way, or maybe you were wrong. Maybe you're a victim of some sort of abuse. And this is the way it manifests itself through your whole life. OK, it it is like you are looking for an answer to something. You know, you want this one thing that you just can't figure out. And a lot of times it's stemming from some unresolved trauma. You know, maybe we lost a loved one or, you know, maybe we were sick as a child or something. Um, so it, it can really be a, a very interesting one. OK, um, if a doctor's reassurance and several doctors, you know, as long as I get my second opinion, I'm good, you know. But if you have had the same thing told to you by like six or more doctors and you've really done your due diligence and had all your tests and there's no reassuring you, then that could be a sign. OK, um, if the person's concerns about their illnesses interfere with their work family or social life. 
that is a big one. Okay. If the person also suffers with anxiety, nervousness, or depression, then you're kind of um, at a predisposition to developing somatic symptom disorder. This is just one to really be on the lookout for. Um, This is a silent one. No one talks about, hey, if you're constantly going to the doctor, constantly getting diagnostic tests done, constantly getting procedures done that you don't need. And maybe they're even cosmetic procedures, you know, like, oh, I'm getting another nose job for the seventh time. You know, that is another way that this can manifest itself. It's like constantly, constantly going to the doctor and I've never um, in, in, in certain conversations or circle of friends had this discussed that people are aware that constantly historically going to the doctor could be a sign of mental illness. It's a sign that we're really stressing about something, you know, in a way that isn't um, healthy. OK, so now we talked about all this. What can we do? Okay, so there's another article that I really want to um, show you that is from JW.org. I love this website because it has great, just simple, clear information um, on a variety of topics. There are several articles and lots of information on mental illness. And this offers um, some things that we can do. And that's what it's all about. It's being aware. And then it's like, okay this is me. This is what I'm doing. I have a problem. How do I fix it? Let's go right here on JW.org. The name of this article is what you should know about mental disorders. So there's a share here from um, this woman by the name of Claudia. She says, I felt as though I had the breath knocked out of me. Uh, She had just been told that she had bipolar disorder and post-traumatic stress disorder. Dealing with the stigma of mental illness seemed overwhelming. It took a long time to come to terms with our situation, um, she says. And then uh, but she realized that she had he had to work on supporting his wife. Excuse me. His her his her husband um, said that. So now here are some key facts about mental health. Mental disorders affect hundreds of millions of people in every part of the world and impact on the lives of our loved ones, okay? One in four people will be affected by mental disorder at some point in their lives. I'm just going to say for the pandemic, we're all affected, okay? Um, To some degree or the other, we have all been affected, okay? Because it's a stressful situation. Schizophrenia and bipolar disorder are among the most severe and disabling disorders, Although huge numbers of people are affected, mental disorders remain hidden, neglected, and discriminated against. And that is a quote from the World Health Organization. According to the World Health Organization, many people with mental illness refrain from seeking treatment because of the stigma associated with them. Although most mental disorders are treatable, In the United States, approximately 60% of adults and almost 50% of youth aged 8 to 15 with mental disorder do not receive treatment and have not received treatment in the past year, reports the National Alliance of Mental Illness, which was um, the one of the previous, the first website um, that I shared. Okay. So we have to be aware and we need to get help. Okay, so understanding mental disorders, let's kind of really hone in on this. What is mental illness? Okay, experts define a mental disorder as a significant dysfunction in a person's thinking, emotional control, and behavior. So, again, let's think solely about the definition. Okay, dysfunction in our thinking, emotional control, and behavior. We all are lacking in one of those areas. Let's just be honest. We all are, okay? And that's okay as long as we get the help. Now, um, when this starts to get to the point that it is um, disrupting a person's ability to relate to others and to deal with the demands of life. So when it gets to the point where you're kind of just 
locked up, you know, yourself, you know, you, you, it's really hard for you to interact socially. Um, you dread it. You don't want to not wanting to be around people just isn't the way we were created. So if that's, you know, kind of where you're at, ask yourself why, why don't I like being around people now? Granted, people can be annoying. Like I'm a person, I can be annoying. Like I get that. But, you know, the balance there, if it's to the extreme where we never want to talk to anybody and we just want to be by ourselves, that's just not the way we were created. It's just not the way we're wired up biologically ish either. So, so that is really something that is abnormal and we need to seek help for it. Okay. Um, and the reason I say that is because we so see all this stuff online now about, um, hey, I am an introvert. Okay. It's almost like we're taking this stance that, hey, you know, I'm doing, I'm an introvert. And, and, you know, so that means, you know, I'm kind of exempt from certain things. Yes and no. If we're an introvert, we don't have to be like someone who's just in the middle of the floor. You know, if, if we're at a gathering or something, we just have to be in center and we're the center of attention and da 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 da. No, introverts and extroverts, the way it's supposed to work, like if you take like a, a personality test or whatever, we're all supposed to have like a little bits of both. We're supposed to be extroverted in some areas and introverted in others. And it all just kind of jives together and makes up our personality. But when it gets to the point that um, maybe we don't greet people, maybe someone says hi to us and we don't even respond. We walk past someone and we don't respond. Um, someone texts us and we don't respond. And, and when called out on it, we say, oh, I'm an introvert. That's really not that's not the way um, it really works. That's not good. It's basically just saying, you know, I this is how I am and I don't want to be bothered, which Hey, if that's the way you want to be, then that's fine. But that's probably a sign that there's something going on because that's not human nature to not ever want to engage with anybody. That's not human nature. Okay. So I hope people think about that because I feel like the, the introvert thing is, is becoming, um, you know, something that we're kind of using as an excuse for bad behavior. You know, if we're being rude and saying, hey, I'm an introvert, deal with it. You're an introvert. I'm an introvert. So you just have to understand yes and no, you know, and um, you can kind of find the balance in that for yourself. But yes and no. OK, so um, let's keep going. OK, now on this topic of mental disorders and defining it, the severity of symptoms can vary in length and intensity, depending on the individual and the particular ailment and the circumstances. It can affect people um, of any gender, any age, any cultural background, race, religion, whatever, and any income level. Um, although, um, sometimes when we are in a socioeconomically, um, lower position, then, you know, we do, we can experience this more because it's stressful when you don't have my money to pay your bills, that's stressful and that's understandable stress, you know? Um, so mental health disorders are not a result of personal weakness or character flaw, through appropriate medical through appropriate medical advice individuals can be treated and can live a productive and fulfilling life so just because someone says hey you have bipolar disorder that doesn't mean oh man my life is over i can't ever you know function like i used to you just may need a little help is all you know you just may need a little bit of help and that help is going to come first and foremost from you you know, understanding what your issue is and saying, you know what, how do I beat this thing? How do I, you know, get in front of it? How do I react when I can tell it's creeping up? Okay. Now, treatment for mental disorders. Okay. First thing that we need to do is we need to make sure we get the help that we need. If you're experiencing some of these severe symptoms that we talked about, you need to seek some professional help and that is okay to do. Okay. Talk to people. If you have a trusted friend or family member that you can talk to, that you feel that you won't be judged or criticized, 
Um, talk to them first, then, you know, get the help of a professional, especially if it's to the point that you're experiencing suicidal thoughts and things like that. Okay. Now, the next thing that you want to do is you want to kind of address some needs. And there's a really nice, simple list at the end of this article that um, kind of puts it all together and sums it up so nicely for us. So first thing you want to do if you are dealing with a mental disorder is follow the treatment prescribed by a qualified mental health professional. So if you clicked on this podcast, hey, that's awesome. It is a start. But guess what? This is information that I'm just sharing. You need to still seek the advice of a mental health professional. If any of this is fitting us, we need to seek that help. Okay. Second, maintain a balanced and stable daily routine. That is something huge for me. Now, I try to make sure that I'm like, okay, this is my week. And on this day, I do this. And this time is, you know, I start prepping this or, you know, preparing for dinner, you know, um, the week's activities. So make sure that there's kind of um, a, a theme of consistency. A sign that we are mentally healthy is that we're able to be consistent. Day after day, year after year, people know when I come to this person, this is what I'm going to get. It's not like one time I might get this, the next time I might get that. I don't know. Okay, so being consistent with your daily schedule, being consistent with your relationships um, is a, a sign that we're we're being mentally healthy there. So if we're not doing that, we need to try to get a, a good daily routine going. The third thing here is stay physically active. Remember, physical exercise releases those feel-good hormones and will make those yucky uh, hormones and yucky ones that we have floating around our system go out. So that is a huge cure, a huge tool that we can use to manage our mental health is staying physically active. Get that body moving. Join a dance class, you know, on Zoom or something. Go out for a walk. Please do that. Make sure you get out. Go for a walk. Go out in nature. Visit nature. Be in nature. We were made to be and enjoy nature. And if you don't enjoy it, maybe you don't like bugs or something like that. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about like you really don't like it. Ask yourself why. Why? Is it overwhelming? You know, um, you just don't feel like getting dressed to go do it. Sometimes it's a spatial thing for people with mental illness. It's like, whoa, it, this is just too open. They want to be in a small, confined area. So again, that is another sign. If we literally don't like going outside and being in nature, that is not the way we were wired up to be, okay? So next, get enough sleep. This is a tough one. Um, lack of sleep really can adversely affect the mood and, you know, start the breeding ground for mood disorders. So um, this is one that I always have to address with myself. I'm finding now um, with the current conditions that we're living in, I need more rest and it is hard to get it sometimes. So that's one we just have to constantly work on is, you know, getting enough rest. Okay. Take time to relax each day. Let there be a time in your day when you do nothing. This is very hard for me. I am a go, go, go person. Ooh, want to do something. Eh. Sometimes it's like, okay, sit down somewhere. Just sit down somewhere. Do nothing. That's okay. Okay. Eat nutritious and nutritious foods and have a balanced diet. Okay. Um, Foods that are going to increase depression and do your research. Just put in Google, hey, foods that aren't good for depression, foods that decrease in uh, depression and see what you find. But I can tell you a couple um, fatty foods are going to make you feel more depressed because your body's got to produce a lot of extra chemicals to process all that. Um, The things that are going to make you feel better are fresh fruits and veggies. It's going to help your body function, which will in turn make your body able to regulate your mood hormones better. Okay, so definitely do that. Limit alcohol consumption and drugs that aren't prescribed. Avoid isolation. Spend time with people whom you trust and who care about you. Um, Now, I want to talk about that one because a lot of time when we have, um, when we're suffering with, with depression, it's hard for us 
to to get out and do things. And we kind of want to be invited. We want someone to say, hey, will you come out and do this with me? 90% of the time, I feel like that's not going to happen. We got to take an active role. So if we've gone through all these things, right? All these signs that are signs of mental illness, okay? If this is fitting the bill, say, you know what? I need to spend more time with people. What can I do? What can I do? Let me invite somebody for something, okay? That's how you're going to get out of that slump, all right? And right now it is tougher because, you know, we still have some limitations and we got to wear masks and all that. But, you know, find maybe just one person that you could say, hey, you know, do you feel comfortable taking a walk at the park? You know, um, do you feel comfortable taking a hike? that you know that this person is going to keep their distance, they're going to be safe, you know, and all of that jazz. They're not going to put you in a position where they're like asking you to like do something you don't want to do that you feel, you know, you might get COVID or something. Have an open conversation. This is what I feel comfortable with. This is what I don't feel comfortable with. And, and really call upon that person or persons when you are, you know, feeling isolated. Remember, we're not meant to be isolated. If someone is saying, I like to be by myself all the time and never engages, that is not good. It is not good. Okay. It really is not good. And sometimes you could even be in a relationship and still be doing that. Okay, so just because someone, you know, maybe they have kids or maybe they have a mate, you could still isolate yourself in a relationship. Okay, so again, it's going to take some self um, evaluation to see, you know, are you isolating yourself and why are you isolating yourself? Okay. And then the last thing that you want to do is you definitely want to give some attention to your spiritual needs as well. That gives us a sense of hope. That gives us a sense of future and optimism. And that is also, you know, something that will combat uh, mental illness is having a positive outlook for the future and, and, and a positive um, mental attitude. Okay. All right. So in this episode, just to kind of summarize a little bit, there's four key takeaways that I hope that everybody can remember about um, mental illness. OK, four um, warning signs that aren't so prevalent, that aren't screaming at you, that are real subtle. The four we went over are easily overwhelmed with small things, small things, short patient and agitated easily. Okay. Sorry. I had up three fingers. I need to have two fingers up right now. <laughs> um, constantly going to the doctor, even when, you know, you've given, been given a clean bill of health several, several times. Okay. And then poor hygiene. So you going days without showering, days without brushing your teeth, okay? So make sure that you really hone in on these. If this is something that's an issue, the only person, and I'm just going to say this, the only person that can help you is you. Your kids can't do it for you. Your mate can't do it for you. Your sister can't do it for you. Your brother can't do it for you. Your friend can't do it for you. You have to do this self-assessment, hear the information, do the research and say, you know what? I have a problem and I need to work on it. Where do I start? What do I do? Okay. And guess what? It's not a one size fits all. You're going to have to revisit this over and over again. That's what we do because we are living in stressful times. So sometimes you're going to be good. Hey, I'm good. And then you'll fall back into it. And then time to say, oh, let me not go too far down. Let me assess what's going on. What am I doing, girl? Uh-uh. Okay. Give myself a couple of days. Remember, you know, I'll give myself up to three days to be depressed, be in a slump, cry, scream, whatever I'm doing. Okay. Freaking out. And then I'm like, okay, three days of that is enough. We're all done. We're all done. Time to move on. Time to get back into uh, mental health. Okay. Let's move on, you know? So give yourself the time that you need, especially if you've had something stressful go on, you may need longer than three days, but set a time limit and say, you know what? After this point, you can even mark it on your calendar. Give yourself a month. 
when this day comes, I am not laying in this bed anymore and I'm going to do A, B, C, and D. And when that rolls around on the calendar, do it. Because the power in all of this is you. You have to make the changes. You got to want, you got to want to care about yourself enough to make these changes, okay? You've got to value yourself enough. You've got to see yourself as valuable to those who love and care about you, okay, to make these changes happen and to continually be able to do that. Because remember, the underlying theme of, you know, being a mentally healthy person is consistency. So when you fall off the wagon, you're able to put yourself back up. When we're not able to put ourselves back on the wagon, then that's when we know, okay, we're going to a point that, you know, we don't want to go to the point of no return, you know, and there is, you know, sometimes that can happen with mental illness. It's just gone so far that, you know, unfortunately people end up, you know, succumbing to the disease and we don't want that to happen. Okay. All right, ladies. I really hope that this episode on mental illness has been helpful. Um, I know that this is probably a longer episode and it's a lot of information. So probably listening on podcasts is probably going to be the easiest thing, but take it up in bits, you know, um, just a little bit at a time. Please also do your own research, reach out to a mental health professional and get the help that you need. Another thing that I will do is on Instagram, you can actually follow um, some of these mental health providers. And sometimes you get just a couple little tips that, you know, it was just what you needed to see that day. You're like, oh, you know, and you're just scrolling and you see something positive about mental health, like, hey, did you do this today or whatever, you know, and I appreciate, you know, the mental health providers who are on social media and are, you know, leaving some positive information um, that is helpful for people on social media. So do that. If you're not following a mental health professional, follow one on Instagram and take care of yourself that way. Okay. All right, ladies, thank you so much for listening to Work It Mommy. Have a great day and we'll see you in the next episode. 